Have you ever seen this kind of animated chart on the internet? There are more and more videos uh, containing such super cool diagrams on YouTube and I guess you've already thought I want that too. Well, today is your lucky day as I'm going to show you how easy it is to create animated charts with After Effects getting data from an external Excel file and without any plugin. So, my name is Claudio Barma and I'm going to share with you also the source code of the project file that I'm going to use during this tutorial. So, grab a pen and stay with me. Okay. I will split this tutorial in two parts. During the first one, I will tell you how to download uh, the project files, uh, how to install them and how to use them. I will explain in detail uh, all, the, all the features uh, so that you can understand uh, how it works. In the second part of the tutorial that, that will, will come out in, in some days, I will tell you how to customize, uh, how to modify uh, the, the project to meet your, your needs. So, first of all, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. This means a lot to me. So before going uh, on, uh, hit the pause button and hit subscribe below. Okay, thank you. Now that we are friends, I can start, uh, I can start explaining you how to get the, the files. So you can either go to my website, uh, claudiobarber.com, uh, I, will, I will write it here or if you are watching this video on uh, YouTube uh, you can just uh, open the description below the video and uh, you will get you will see that uh, there's a link uh, to my uh, website click on the website click on the link uh, and you will be redirected to my website and you will find a click here to download uh, the animated charts project for After Effects click on it uh, and you will get this file, a zip file, okay, containing uh, a folder uh, with some something in it. Uh, do not open it from from the zip file. Just get your, uh, your folder on, uh, copy your folder on your hard disk somewhere. And once you have done this, I'm gonna tell you what you can find inside it. So the charts dot the AEP is the project uh, itself, uh, of, uh, you, know, uh, you, you will have to, to double click on it to open it on After Effects. Uh, in the footage um, folder I have put the, um, the data source, which is a, a simple uh, CSV file, so you can do this in, a, in, a, in Excel and then export it in CSV format. If you open it in CSV format uh, it looks like this. So, for example, here I have um, created a, a table with uh, the year and some values for department one, two, and three. It will vary, and the values uh, vary for each uh, year from 2000 to 2020. You will be able to to modify those data as well uh, quite quite easily. But now let's get back to this uh, to the project. So we can open it in. A, in uh, After Effects and here it was already opened so it was already running behind uh, the curtains. You will see that uh, I didn't use any um, keyframe in this uh, in this project which is strange because uh, most of us are used to you put keyframe everywhere when you see animations but this time I've used only expressions uh, which must uh, be scary for some of you, but uh, that's the easiest way to do this kind of animation. So, uh, especially as this is data driven, so uh, the data is coming out from um, from the CSV file. So uh, now that you are in After Effects, uh, I will uh, rapidly explain each each uh, layer. So you have this uh, uh, white solid, which is the white background. I have put the CSV file in the composition as well. Uh, normally you don't really need this except when, when you, you want to render and so if you want the, the data to render correctly you need to include the, the data uh, file in the, in the composition. But what's more interesting for you are the lines which have been colored in, in green, so these ones. Uh, and this one as well, yeah. These are the ones which are uh, dynamic, uh, so, so they are getting data from uh, from the from the data file. 
and you can see that the data file is uh, is uh, updated uh, online because for example I can modify the first value for department 1 if I put I don't know 30 as for the first year and I save it you go back to um, After Effects instead of 16 you can see that it's put in 30 if you want to see um, the expressions which are put in on each uh, layer you just uh, select the layer and you uh, hit twice uh, the key E so E, -E and this will open uh, all the um, all the properties with an, uh, an expression on, on, on them so this is the value of the year so this is uh, this value is taken from the first column in the CSV file and uh, how do I show the value what I do uh, as uh, the value must be changing uh, okay every second I put uh, a new value of, of the year how do I do this? So, first of all, uh, I use this. Um, uh, I call the the function time, which returns the the time in second spent from the beginning of the of the composition, and then I tell if uh, uh, t uh, so the number of second is more greater than twenty, then put it to twenty. That is why I do this because when it uh, reaches the end. Uh, of the file, I, I don't want it to give an error, I just want it to stop at 20 and you see it's not moving anymore after after 20. And then uh, it's time to get the, the data from the from the CSV file and this is done with this line uh, footage data1.csv which is the name of the file and get the, the data value uh, on column 0 um, after effects count the column starting from zero, columns and row from zero, not from one. So the column zero is the first one, the one with the year, and put the uh, row with uh, this number of, of seconds. So every second it will put uh, a new a new value. In my data, this is what is actually shown put into this the source text property of the of this uh, year value. So this is how we do this part. Now let's see something more interesting, the actual um, width change of the bar chart. So let's select, you see, one, two, three, these are the, one, the three rectangles uh, uh, representing the, the, the chart. Hit uh, twice E. I have modified the scale um, property of, the, of uh, this rectangle to represent uh, the, the values in the CSV file. The code is similar because I always take the, the time. Uh, this time I, I put, uh, I use, I'm using this math.floor which is just giving me back the, the integer part of the, of the time. I put uh, the same uh, rule here if time is greater than 19, limited to 19. And then I, get, I want to get two values, the current value and the next value. As you see here, I'm getting the footage, uh, I'm getting the data value, uh, this layer, this layer just uh, uh, giving me back the name of the layer, and in this case is uh, 1. So uh, get column 1 and give me the row uh, TT. So for, ex for example, at the first execution, uh, it will be TT will be 0 and TT plus 1 will be 1. So give me the value at 0 and at 1. So if you will see at the, in the CSV file, this will be 30 and 20. And then with, this, with those two values, x and x1, you just uh, uh, calculate the, uh, the scale. Uh, actually, the vertical, the vertical scaling is always fixed to 100. It will not... Uh, be modified as you can see here it's always the same height but the the, the, the width is, is changing and the width is calculated with this function ease which is just creating automatically uh, an animation between uh, on, on animation on, on time 
between the moment tt and the moment tt plus 1, so the first time it will be between 0 and 1 second, and between the value uh, x, which is in this case 30, and 20, which is the second value. I have multiplied it by 5 to, to have, a, I mean, to, to see better the the expansion of uh, of the diagram, but, but it's not, this is not important, or you can put whatever you you want. So if you see here, it's it's 30, and after one second, it will after one second it's going down to 20. You see, and this animation between zero and one has been created by this function is. And that is how the animation is uh, is done. The label here is in the um, t uh, in the layer with the t prefix and let's have a look at the content of it uh, it follows it follows the same uh, rules as the other ones actually i'm getting the integer part of the time uh, time is always maximum uh, 19 and i'm getting the um, part of uh, the name layer name uh, which interests me, which is the 3 here. I had just to put a different uh, prefix uh, because I could not uh, call the layer with the same name uh, as uh, the other one here below. So I have put uh, for the description here the <coughs> prefix t, but I had to do this uh, um, string uh, to call this string function to get uh, this part of the of the name which is three so actually name is just returning three and then i will just access the data file and looking into the data and getting the third column of the csv file so three it's going to be taking this uh, exact uh, string here so the last type of data that i want to show you is um this um this uh, layer here which is uh, the one with the v prefix uh, and this uh, actually is um, the current value uh, interpolated uh, during the each at each uh, at each moment so um, let's have a look at the code uh, so e -E to show the uh, expression so here i had to modify i mean um, two two uh, properties because it's there is the value uh, of the text of the the source text of the of the of the property of the layer and also the x position because you see that the position is following the the the, the bar chart and moving uh, along so let's have a look at the source text the source text uh, uh, i'm not uh, going back to every single detail but what is interesting for this part uh, is that uh, we are still getting the two values the one at the this moment and the one at the at the next uh, at the next second uh, which is the next next year in the diagram in the in the csv file and uh, i am um, calling a linear uh, function so at each moment uh, i am getting a, a linear interpolation between the following value and the present value and this um, this second um, property is the x position. So, and how do we get the position of uh, this layer? We just get the the scale value of uh, of the rectangle, and we can add plus two hundred to place it wherever we want uh, in uh, relation with the with the with the rectangle. It's not difficult because. Uh, I mean, it's just a matter of using the right uh, the right code in, in here. You can play with it a little bit and see what happens if you it doesn't work anymore. You just get your zip file and reinstall it again, no problem. But uh, yeah, that's how it uh, that's how it it, uh, it works. Well, there is one more thing that uh, I can tell you here, which is the fact that uh, actually this uh, um, two three. Two, three, two, three. Actually, uh, exact copies of the first uh, of the first version. So if you delete, uh, if you delete uh, those um, layers, uh, you can just uh, recopy them uh, because uh, the code uh, which I've used is 
really making reference to this uh, one 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 in here. So if you select the first one and hit Ctrl D to duplicate, you will see that, uh, and then uh, you hit uh, the down arrow, shift down arrow, you will see that uh, uh, it's already automatically, uh, I mean dynamically updated. You can see Deep 1, Deep 2, and same thing for uh, Ctrl D once you have uh, selected D2, uh, V2 and 2. Ctrl D and you have the 3 and you just down arrow or shift down arrow and you get the third uh, the third uh, column and that's it and then of course uh, the only thing uh, thing that you have still to modify is the color if you want uh, so if you want to modify the color you just uh, select the rectangle uh, put the color you want that's it so uh, next time I will show you how you can modify the, um, the CSV file uh, most importantly how if you how you can add a new a new column and see and uh, that it will uh, be reflected into this um, into the into the project and how you can you can uh, you can see it and I will also show you how you can modify I mean the type of uh, elements so if you want verticals uh, uh, ch charts instead of uh, or horizontal ones what you can uh, you can do. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, this uh, tutorial. I understand this uh, can be a little daunting if you don't have a, a developer background, but just you have already the, the code. It's uh, it's uh, available for free to you. Uh, so do not hesitate. If you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to leave a comment below. I will try to answer to every single question and if you still haven't uh, subscribed to my channel please uh, hit the subscribe button below and uh, like the video if you like and see you in the next tutorial for part 2. Bye!